Alrighty. Hello and welcome to the library. My name is Sared and I am your host and narrator. Let me just move some things around so that it can, the camera can pick me up okay. Uh, today is, uh, today we will be continuing on with The Wife is First. Uh, we will be starting off with chapter 34, but I have a bit of a conundrum. So let me walk you through it. Um, the Wife is First has three volumes, and we're getting really close to the end of the first volume. Um, I suppose it's just easy enough for me to show you. Let me go on over to our screen here. Okay, so as you can see, so we just finished 33. We're going to head into 34, but we've not got an even number. <coughs> so I'm playing with the idea of doing more than usual or less than usual. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, if I were to do three chapters per episode, that would round us off nicely to then start in with volume two. However, when volume two is set to start, I will be missing that uh, episode. I won't be here for that Wednesday stream. So I'm going to start with 34, obviously, and we'll see how it goes. Um, if, for instance, it's great and I can keep going, again, we'll see. So we've got six rather than eight. So it'll be uh, iffy. What? Excuse me. Um, but yeah. Let me go over here. Sorry, I just wanted to check on a few more things before we get started. Um, if you are a fan of Don May, which I would hope so if you're watching this, um, I have up on my about page on my on Twitch, um, I have where you can vote for what we will be reading next when we check uh, catch up to um, the end or either when we end one of these or when we catch up to the end of the updated chapters for one of these probably um married thrice to salted fish i can continue going on with just doing two chapters of each but what i found was that i get really invested in that one story so that when it is time to go back to the one that we're waiting on it's a little trickier to do Please excuse the yawning. That literally, none of this happened until I pressed go on here. So, um, we did have a few issues on last night's stream. <coughs> For some reason, it kept uh, crapping out on us. And it um, dropped quite a few. Like, it stopped streaming which was awful. Um, so if you're on Twitch and you're looking for the full version of last night's episode of Mary Thrice to Salted Fish, go over onto the YouTube channel, the YouTube version of the library, and you will find the fully recorded version up on there for you to watch it, listen to. So yeah. I do not have to work tomorrow and I don't have to rush off anywhere. So I'm toying with the idea of um, going longer. But if these yawns keep fucking going, that's not going to happen. All right, let me get another drink. I love that. Mm. I just want to say before y'all get on me, it's, I'm not drinking pop, it's boobly. Boobly, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Let me go over here. Okay. Fuck off with the yawning. My God. Okay. I'm trying a new thing. You'll notice over here in the corner, um, I have the covers of the book. Uh, that we're currently reading. I'm hoping that helps draw people in when they're watching this on Twitch. So if we can go over to Twitch, 
Uh, let's just go here and here. And it'll pull up my page, but I just want to browse. Oops. Nope. Um, I'm having a real issue with uh, people not getting peoples. So you'll notice, of course. Okay, here we go. This guy over here, he's got the book. This guy over here, he's got the book. This one's got the book. They have all got the books that they're currently reading on their thing. And I'm going, that's a brilliant fucking idea. And duh, and I should do that. So. So that's what we've done. We'll see if it helps. I don't think it actually stands out very well now that I'm looking at it, at it like this. But let me see, what does this look like? This is, I know we're, we're getting all duplicate here, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess it's okay. Um, it does also cut off the page that we're reading quite a bit, but I really don't know how to get around that. Um, I'm just really trying to figure out how to help people find the books. Anyways, all right. I can't remember yeah. Jing Chen. Oh, that's right. He just found the brother. Oh, okay. Okay, I know where we are. I love this character. Jing Chen, the elder brother. I love him. He's awesome. He deserves all the love. He's so good. Okay. Okay. One more fucking yell. That's it. We yawn when we're stressed, I guess. Chapter 34 Persian Silk Tree I take it as a gift for you, just to be with you all my life, and live happily ever after. Aw. You're hurt this badly and still say it's fine? Jing Xiao's brow furrowed tightly and he reached it out to pinch that white cloth. He wanted to see his brother's wound, but was also afraid of hurting him. His fingertips stopped three inches away from the cloth, not daring to go closer. Jing Qian had never seen his younger brother so cautious and solemn before. His always serious expression couldn't help but crack. The reprimand he had been about to give died on his lips. He somewhat shakily stretched out his hand. <coughs> and rubbed Jing Xiao's head. Aw, head pats. It really isn't serious. It's just that the wound is long and not easy to wrap. That's why such a large area is wrapped up. Jing Xiao was stunned. From memory, his elder brother had never acted so intimately towards him. When he was young, jumping up and down, snatching birds' nests and fight, fishing up koi, his elder brother was already in the study reading books with a stiff face. And most of what he said to Jing Xiao was, What troubles will there be next? When his empress mother died, he cried bitterly. His elder brother just knelt in front of the coffin and didn't cry or speak. When he pulled on his elder brother's sleeve, he only got the silence. So immature. Only know how to cry. As a result, Jing Xiao had thought that he wasn't close to his brother all his life. Up until he was in prison, when his elder brother visited him. Jing Xiao still remembered his brother's calm and powerful voice, clear as day. You are my only brother. I won't let you die, even if I have to sacrifice everything I have. Scenes of the past flashed through his mind. Jing Xiao felt his nose sting. If he hadn't been able to live again, he would, he would never have known how much his brother had done for him. It was just that it was all done in places he didn't know of. Rubbing one finger under his nose, <coughs> Jing Xiao took out a small green jade bottle from his chest and stuffed it into Jing Chen's hand. 
The carriage ride is bumpy. Go back and have sister-in-law help you apply this. Jing Chen looked at the small bottle in his hand. His father had bestowed this light green bottle on Jing Xiao before the latter had gone off on his expedition. Jing Chen frowned and said, This is a life-saving medicine. I only have a superficial injury. Take it back. With that, he tried to stuff it back into Jing Xiao's hand, but the latter quickly retreated to the carriage door. I still have some at home. You take this bottle. If you don't think it's worth using now, then just keep it on you. It'll make me feel a little more at ease. Jing Xiao said as he raised the curtain and prepared to go out. I came out to pick you up, and I went around the capital. No one knows about this. As for Imperial Father, that old man's heart is like a mirror. It's useless to try and hide it from him. Jing Chen grasped the jade bottle in his hand and watched the tall and straight figure of his younger brother mount his horse, shake the reins gently, and disappear. His lips curved slowly. His Xiao Xiao. His Xiao Xiao Er was really getting more and more thoughtful. Even if it was his mother's house, it wasn't a pro... Oh, sorry. And page break. I love those brothers. Oh my goodness. I truly do. And back to the inviting. Let's go. Even if it was his mother's house, it wasn't appropriate for the wang... And again, even if it was his mother's house, it wasn't appropriate for the Wang Fei to stay for dinner. Thus, when Jing Xiao went back to his palace, Mu Han Zheng had returned. The table was full of dishes, and his Wang Fei, dressed in soft and casual silk clothes, sat at the table waiting for him to have dinner. It was really nice to have someone waiting for you to come home. Jing Xiao couldn't help but go over and place a kiss on that handsome face. The surrounding maids who saw this lowered their heads one by one. Mu Han Zhang's handsome face instantly turned completely red as there were servants all around. This man indeed did not know how to restrain himself. He couldn't help but glare at Jing Xiao. Go and change your clothes. Your mouth is full of dirt. He felt that the words weren't proper as soon as he said them. They sounded more like he was flirting, and he couldn't help but feel annoyed inwardly. Jing Xiao pressed his fist to his lips to muffle his laugh, and turned to go to the washroom to wash his face and change his clothes. Hey, books, how you doing? Lovely to see you. I, w I wish I could bring the chat. Oh, I can't. I think I can. I'm going to bring the chat over here because I can't see it when it's over there. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a very long time since I've seen everyone. Sleepy. Were you streaming today? If you're sleepy, you can just sit and listen to us read. Although, I do warn you, I do think there's going to be some spiciness in the future chapters. Because Jing Xiao's got the go-ahead and... <laughs> At the end of May, the weather was starting to turn hot. Jing Xiao changed his clothes, took the cup which Mao Xi handed him, and glug, 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 drank until the cup was empty. Mu Han Zheng ladled out a bowl of mug bean soup for him and waved his hands for the maids to withdraw. Did you see elder brother? Jing Xiao took a sip of the soup and nodded. Brother was injured, so the carriage was slower. Was he badly hurt? Mu Han Zhang frowned. Jing Xiao took a bite of food and felt that its taste was quite good. He picked up some with his chopsticks and placed them in his Wang Fei's bowl. It was a superficial injury. Shouldn't be too severe. Mu Han Zhang looked at the food in his bowl. 
When he saw Jing Xiao's expectant face, he didn't say anything. He picked up the bowl and ate the food. Anyway, ever since their marriage, Wang Yi had served him a lot, and he would feel happy in his heart every time. This man did act as if Mu Han Jiang were a woman, ordering him about, but actually respecting and cherishing him. If he truly couldn't imagine how sad oh he truly couldn't imagine how sad his life would be if Jing Xiao were like other husbands. Adhering to the courtesy of not speaking during meals, Mu Han Jiang no longer said anything, and instead concentrated on eating. Jing Xiao had only eaten two pieces of stewed beef at lunch. Now he was really hungry. He picked up his bowl and also began to eat quickly. Mu Han Jiang was somewhat surprised to see him so ravenous. When Jing Xiao picked up his third bowl of rice, Mu Han Jiang was afraid that he would overeat and could only reach out to stop him. Seeing Jing Xiao show him face was still wanting to eat more. Seeing Jing Xiao show him a face of still wanting to eat more, he didn't know whether to laugh or cry, and said, You're eating too fast. You don't know when your hunger will be satisfied. If you eat too much at night, you'll get indigestion. They were both men, and all the rice bowls in the East Court were big bowls. Jing Xiao would normally be very full after eating two bowls. Eating so much this time, if he finished his third bowl, he definitely wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Jing Xiao also knew this, so he obediently put down his chopsticks and drank half a bowl of mug bean soup. It was only while they waited for the maids to clean up that he realized that he had perhaps eaten too much. Wu Hanjiang sighed and after drinking tea, took him for a walk in the garden to help with his digestion. The mid-spring evening breeze brought with it a slight wave of heat. When it brushed past the face, one could smell fiery sunlight amidst the fragrance of flowers. My father said that next month he'll promote Yinang to second-rank concubine. Mu Hanjiang went under the Persian silk tree and looked up. This tree was covered in pink flowers, their beauty like that of mist. That's truly a good thing. You'll be able to call her mother in the future. When Jing Xiao saw him looking at the flowers in the tree, he stretched out his hand and jumped lightly, grabbing a handful of colorful blooming flowers, which he then presented to his Wang Fei. perfectly fine flowers that have bloomed. What did you pick them for? Mu Hanjiang looked at the flowers in his hand and didn't take them. A flower offering for a beauty, Jing Xiao said proudly. Mu Hanjiang glared at the Wang Yi, who is beginning to act indecently again. I heard before that these are flowers of misery. How can they still be used as an offering? Jing Xiao scratched his head. Persian silk flowers were originally called flowers of misery. A blooming flower of misery meant that the husband had had a change of heart. This meaning truly wasn't good. Jing Xiao quickly threw away the flowers in his hand and pulled off a leafy tree branch, stuffing it into Jin Qing's hand. What are you doing now? Scratch offering flowers? Who would gift leaves? Mu Hanjiang turned the branch full of green leaves in his hand. The leaves were closed, and not seeing anything particularly worth looking at, he couldn't help but laugh at Jing Xiao. <laughs> that was a very awkward flower meeting. <laughs> Persian silk leaves. Persian silk leaves open during the day and close at night which means to be bound by deep love. I'm giving this to you, so as to be united with you for all of my life, through the ages and always in a happy union. Jing Xiao said boldly and confidently. Oh. <laughs> Mu Han Jiang was stunned for a moment. He looked down at the leaves that were tightly closed at night. 
Jing Xiao had unexpectedly said such a thing. For a moment, Mu Hanjiang didn't know how to answer. However, his handsome face was suddenly tinged with a red flush, shining in the clear moonlight, looking all the more beautiful. Jing Xiao became a little foolish when he saw this. He couldn't help but grab his Wang Fei's hand and search for those thin lips to kiss them. Mm. Mu Hanjiang groaned softly but didn't resist. That phrase, united for all of my life, through the ages and always in happy union, made his whole heart swell and also made him want to do something intimate to prolong that feeling. I just, if you're tuning in for the first time in a while, this does get spicy. <laughs> mm. Hydrates. <clears throat> and can get explicitly so, just FYI. I tried to warn when it's coming up, but it even surprises me sometimes. The next day, the second prince returned to court with his injury and stood in the platform in the large hall. Incoming spiciness. <laughs> there was quite some spiciness. <laughs> I've had, I've started labeling the chapters that have spiciness like 18 plus so that people can sp skip them if they need to. <laughs> Emperor Hong Jiang took pity on the second prince as his injury had yet to heal and granted him a seat. The emperor was very angry about the attack on the imperial envoy and ordered a thorough investigation. In addition, Jing Chen also brought news which shocked all levels of society. The tribute from the southwest hadn't been stolen by mountain thieves at all, but by the king of the southwest himself. All the tribute had stalled at the border of the southwest feudal region, near the official road leading to the capital city. Whether it was coincidental or deliberate, the southwest king's memorial to the emperor to avoid sending, to avoid sending troops to rescue the eldest prince had also arrived in the capital yesterday. In his petition, the Southwest King said that the Southwest had suffered from a spring drought this year. In many places, not a speck of grain had been harvested, and the tributes had also just happened to be stolen. You think, you think he could have hidden it? Like, to, to leave it right on the border, that's like a slap in the face. <laughs> I feel like that's just laziness or just like, fuck you. Worse still, the Southwest King had already lowered expenditure, expenditure to aid the people. The region truly had no ability to mobilize an army to the Yunnan Tibet region. The King earnestly requested that the court allocate them provisions first. This fucker. <laughs> like, that's gumption. <laughs> well, I'll be motherfucker. His deceit is truly intolerable. Emperor Hong Jiang took Jing Chen's memor memorial along with the Southwest Kings and threw them down fiercely on the jade steps. The Southwest King is really too unbridled. Fan Ji, the upright imperial censor, stepped out, trembling with rage. Your Majesty. Please quell your anger. The most important thing is that the eldest prince is still in the Yunnan Tibet region. It is uncertain whether he is alive or dead. The Southwest King refuses to send troops, so we must quickly mobilize other troops and horses. The Minister of War glanced at Jing Tian, then stepped forward to remind the Emperor. The king of the southwest knows that the eldest prince isn't good at fighting battles, which is why he dares to openly and brazenly deceive the court, wanting the tribute reduced in exchange. In Chen's opinion, we should dispatch a famous general to Yunnan Tibet. Song An, the assistant minister of war, 
hurriedly came forward to speak, looking somewhat pointedly at Jing Xiao. Jing Xiao hated how Song An was once again asked acting on his own initiative, to the point that his teeth itched, and he took half a step back unobtrusively. <laughs> the southern barbarians don't have large numbers. It is not worth making a big fuss over. The reason why the eldest prince is in a dangerous situation is that he is not familiar with Yunnan Tibet's environment. Chen thinks that as long as the eldest prince is rescued, that will suffice. There is no need to send another famous general. If we spend some time, this will definitely be resolved. The North Marquis, who rarely spoke up, suddenly stepped forward, and his steady and powerful voice immediately cut through the endless noise of the crowd. Emperor Hong Jiang looked at Mu Jin and nodded silently. The North Marquess of this generation had been stationed in northwest China as a young man. He had fought many wars and defended his noble title with his own abilities. His words naturally carried prestigious weight. Hence, Emperor Hong Jiang decreed that the southwest king be reprimanded. He immediately sent troops to rescue the eldest prince. As for reducing the tribute and the matter of providing provisions, he completely denied these requests. At the same time, he dispatched soldiers and horses from the Sushan province to, re to rescue the eldest prince via another route. <laughs> oh. Page break. That's why I was confused. Ha 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 ha. Mother, I heard that father is going to promote Chu Yin Chu Yinan to second wife. Mu Ling Bao urgently and angrily rushed to the first wife's house after his punishment of being forbidden from going outside was finally over. I know the North Marchioness had become Oh, sorry. I know. The North Marchioness had become rather haggard. The Emperor had decreed that the fourth prince's consort would be the young lady from Duke Mao's household. It would be settled in the sixth month, and as the seventh month wasn't auspicious, the ceremony was set for the eighth month. Lady Du had now become the laughingstock of the whole capital and she was so ashamed that she hadn't dared go out for nearly a month. The fourth prince had determined this in the sixth month, but the North Marquess was going to promote Lady Chu in the sixth month as well, which was a clear sign to everyone that from now on, the North Marquess was on Cheng Wang's side. Now, they would all have to look up at that bastard son. How can that be? Mu Ling Bao swept the fruit platter off the table and said, If Chu Yinan is promoted to second rank concubine, then Mu Hun Jiang will become the second son. If I die, then he can also inherit the title. What nonsense! The North Marchioness slapped Mu Ling Bao's. No, wait. The M North Marchioness slapped Mu Ling Bao's back. You are the heir by imperial decree, and nobody can take that title away. He's already married to the Chang Wang. What basis is there for him to return to his mother's home and inherit the title? If Chang Wang becomes the emperor and dismisses him, then wouldn't he be able to inherit the rank? After being smacked by his mother, Mu Ling Bao plopped down on the Luohan bed and raised his voice. <laughs> If Chang Wang becomes the emperor, do you think he'll live to ascend the throne? The North Marchioness sneered. The reign of a prince who has married a male wife wouldn't last. Even if Chen Wang seized the throne by some extraordinary means, it would be disgraceful to keep a male wife. He would naturally be erased from the history books. 
Mulingba was stunned before finally cheering up. Mother truly stands tall and sees far. If you were even the slightest bit mature, would it be necessary for me to use these methods? The North Marchioness flicked his forehead fiercely with her finger. Lady Tu, who had come to deliver some accounting ledgers, snapped out of her daze as she stood outside the door. She was so alarmed that she broke out in a cold sweat. Da, da, da. <laughs> Let me get a sip of water and we're going to continue on. Oh, I love it. Mm. How did that sound effect go? It wasn't quite as loud as I was expecting it to be. I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit. I had to cave and get sound effects for certain things because I was trying to do them here and for instance if I slap I'm going to do this right in front of the mic and let's see how loud this gets that was as hard as I could possibly snap slap right in front of the mic so this mic has um, automatic dampening built into it oh I love the fizz um, so certain sound effects weren't quite working so I had to um, cave and figure out how to do them and I did only thing is I need a desk slam like a good boom desk slam and so far I've only got a slamming door that's what I've been using hmm. all right let's do this oh. go back to this page I so desperately need the bigger version of the stream deck Ay. okay marker Chapter 35 Guessing Although Mu Hanjang felt distressed, he could only persuade him to swallow his, fir his breath first. Why do I think that that is going to lead to some spiciness? We'll see. Oh, his mom. Right. We're oh, by the way, this uh, Yu Chu Yin Yinang, uh, this is Mu Hanjang's mom. Real mom, not, you know, yeah. Chu Yinang looked left and right and saw the first wife's eldest maid, Yan Hong, returning with tea from one end of the corridor. She quickly, she quickly retreated two steps, stood behind one of the corridor pillars, and waited for the maid to reach the door before she slowly stepped out. Chu Yinang has come to del- oh, sorry. Chu Yinang has come to deliver the account books. Yan Hong saw her and quickly smiled. Chu Yinang would be promoted to second wife next month. Recently, the people in this household had become a lot more polite to her. Assholes. The eldest young master is... Oh. The eldest young master is inside. Please help... Please let me help Yinang bring them in. Thank you for the trouble. Chu Yinang smiled and held, handed her the books and turned to leave. The two people inside the room stopped talking when they heard the maid's voice, waiting for the person to come in. Lady Du asked, Yan Hong, who was outside? When this maid servant came to the door, I only bumped into Chu Yinang, who had come to deliver the account books. She said this maid... She let this maid intercept her and went back. Yin Yan Hong smiled and put the books on the table. The North Marchioness frowned. She had gotten Chu Yinang to examine this month's accounts in the side office today. She had ushered out all the maids, but had forgotten about her. Fortunately, Yan Hong had come back in time. No, she fucking didn't. She had Yan Hong go out and guard the door. Lady Du raised her head and said to Mu Ling Bao, you are the eldest son in the family and no longer a child. You even know how to go out and fool around. Don't hang about with that pack of rogues and visit low-class brothels all day. If you have nothing to do, practice your martial arts more. The next time you fight that guy from Duke Mao's, you won't be humiliated again. It wasn't my fault. That turtle-like shit used a dirty trick. When Mu Ling Bao was scolded, he immediately refused to accept it and argued. What are you afraid of? 
that Mu Hunjang brat can't learn martial arts. Even if I practiced casually, I'd still be stronger than him. Chu Yinang returned to her residence, feeling distraught. She originally thought that Wang Yi treated Huan Han Jiang rather well. His days would be better at the prince's palace than the marquis's residence, so she herself hadn't asked for much. But she had completely forgotten about the fight over the imperial throne. Cheng Wang was so brave and good at fighting. All the children in the capital knew that. Would this kind of person be content with remaining with a Wang Yi all his life? Would this person, would this kind of person be content with remaining a Wang Yi all his life? And without any sons from a first wife, his children wouldn't be able to inherit any of the nobility of a Wang Yi. Chu Yinang had a mind to go find her son and have a proper talk with him. But she was still just a concubine, unable to leave as she pleased. Lady Chu sighed and summoned her maid, Yan Chi, Yan Tui, to send a letter to Mo Ling, uh, to send a letter to the Mo Lian establishment. Yinang, the second young master's shop sells, sells perfumed ointment. How can the servant go in? Yan Tzu immediately blushed. Chu Yinang glared at the girl making a fuss and said, I just need you to send it to the front gates of our residence. Give this to the Wang Yi's third... Give this to the Wang family's third son who drives the cart. Don't worry about the rest. The investigation into the attack on the second prince in the southwest had not clarified anything. The government office of the justice... The government office of justice determined that the assassins were likely commoners of unorthodox origin, such as the so-called Jinan Hu masters, who were desperate for money. However, Jing Chen had been dressed in plain clothes and gone in incognito. Only the few bodyguards at his side knew his whereabouts. Four of the bodyguards had been sent by the emperor, and two by Cheng Wang. No one in court said it aloud, but they were all suspicious. The assassination attempt on the second prince had to be related to Cheng Wang. At this time, Cheng Wang insisted on providing you with two guards. Thinking about it now, that was truly suspicious. A guest at the second prince's residence, Teacher Chen said sincerely. Jing Chen, who was injured and at home, was sitting at his table, and he frowned at these words. That's unnecessary to say. Jing Xiao would not harm me. Your Highness! In the Imperial household, the strength of brotherhood is as thin as paper. Even your brothers cannot be trusted. Chang Wang is, has great military achievements, but he married a male wife. His heart definitely wouldn't be content. Chen has heard that he dotes on the Wang Fei very much in front of everyone, but that is inconceivable. One has to ask, if your highness had all the qualifications to take the throne, would you be content to remain Cheng Wang? Teacher Chen wouldn't let the subject be brushed off so easily. Enough! Chen... Jiang Cheng slammed down the cup in his hand on the table. Do not bring up those unfounded speculations about Jiang Xiao again. After driving out that flock of ceaselessly jabbering advisors, a tired Jing Chen rubbed the space between his eyebrows, took a pen, and began to write a memorial for the emperor. Your Highness, Teacher Chen and the others were saying that for your own good, there's nothing wrong with paying them a little more attention. The second prince's Wang Fei, Lady Xiao, came in with a bowl of herbal tea to mitigate the heat and, and hesitated a moment, 
but couldn't help speaking. What are you inserting yourself in court matters for? Jing Chen glared at her and refused to discuss it any further. Lady Xiao would never be able to understand how much he treasured his brother. Jing Chen was tired of talking so much and didn't want to explain it to anyone. He knew from experience that this woman was short-sighted and wasn't able to understand many things no matter how he tried to explain. But if even his own advisors doubted Jing Xiao, then there would certainly be people in court who also doubted him. Jing Chen's brow wrinkled more deeply. This was a terrible situation no matter who was responsible. To the culprits, if he died, that would be for the best. If he didn't, the blame could be shifted to Jing Xiao. No matter if it was to tarnish Jing Xiao's reputation as Cheng Wang, or to cause conflict between brothers, the outcome would be in the opponent's favor. Trying to investigate the assassins further will only do you harm, Lu Han Jiang told Jing Xiao early in the morning as he helped him tie on the jade belt of his court clothes. Today, if someone targets you and tries to accuse you, you must scold him loudly and display your filial piety, filial piety and fraternal duty. Don't try to refute them with any kind of evidence or proof. You won't be able to beat those officials in talking. Knowing that Jing Xiao had been suffering grievances in court these days, Mu Han Jiang was upset for him, but could only urge him to first swallow his words. I'm just so angry. I'm almost certain it was Jing Wu who did this. Are we going to let him get away unpunished? Jing Xiao furiously retorted. His imperial father would, should be clear about this matter in his heart, but Jing Xiao was bitter at the current lack of clues. After all, they couldn't do anything simply because he claimed Jing Yu was the one behind it. Even if the fourth prince was the one who did it, killing one's brother is a big crime. If they dared to do it, then they would have to be completely prepared. Wu Hanjiang sighed. If brother wants to protect you, he will certainly write a memorial to ask Imperial Father not to investigate this matter further. You just need to remember not to be impulsive. Jing Xiao walked out, discontent. He barely took two steps before he turned back, arms drooping, and buried his face in Wang Fei's shoulder. I'm so vexed. I don't want to go today. I love him so much. Mu Hanjang looked helplessly at the big fellow hanging onto his body, raised his hand and patted him. And pets. <laughs> Don't be so willful. Go quickly. Jing Xiao groaned and wouldn't move. Seeing that it wasn't so early anymore, Mu Hanjang was afraid that Jing Xiao would be late, so he said gently, Yesterday, Big Brother Joe bought a... <sighs> Yesterday, Big Brother Joe bought a pot of prawns. I'll go to the Ministry of War at noon to pick you up. Let's go to the Huiwei restaurant for lunch. When Jing Xiao heard these words, he immediately became more spirited. Then it's settled. I just need to go to the Ministry of War at 5 to... Mao hour. At 5 to 7 a.m.? I'll be able to leave by 9 by 9 to 11 a.m. See hour. Muhan Jang watched his Wang Yi leave energetically. He smiled lightly and shook his head. How come the man was becoming more and more like a child? They do that as they get older. <laughs> he had to use food to bribe him to go out and handle his proper affairs. <laughs> Where were they? <laughs> At this morning court, as Mu Han Jiang had expected, those officials who liked to talk in circles insinuated that Jing Xiao was suspicious. Jing Chen was still recuperating from his wounds and wasn't present. The fourth prince kept his head down the entire time. 
and he didn't say a single word. Suspicious. Jin Xiao listened to his Wang Fei's advice and didn't retort. Instead, he scolded the officials for their vicious thoughts and for looking down on brotherhood and filial piety. Emperor Hong Zheng looked at Jing Xiao, whose face and neck were red with anger. He didn't say a word and waited until Jing Xiao was finished. Then he spoke slowly. This time, the second prince was attacked by assassins. If it wasn't for Cheng Wang's guards risking their lives to protect him, everything would have ended in disaster. Thus, until we are able to clearly investigate the matter, we will not make any assumptions. Do you think Jen is a three-year-old child? He then threw the memorial at the feet of the Imperial Censor standing below the Jade Steps. The Imperial Censor Fan Ji, who had just spoken, had done so with had done so the most vigorously. He was intimidated by the Emperor's imposing voice and had to kneel down to pick up the memorial on the ground. The memorial was the one the second prince had passed to the Emperor yesterday. In it, he sincerely urged his Imperial Father not to investigate the matter for the time being because the one people would suspect the most would be his own little brother. As an older brother, he truly wouldn't be able to bear that kind of situation. The second prince's heart is tolerant and kind. This time, he went to the southwest to investigate the matter of the tribute. His, contribu his contributions cannot go unnoticed. He will be conferred the title of Rui Wang. Once Jing Chen recovers from his wounds, let the Minister of Confucian Rites pick a day. After looking at his two sons in the eye, Emperor Hong Zheng tossed his sleeves and left. His eyes were profound, the meaning in them unclear. Mu Han Zheng had breakfast and took Yun Ju out with him. He first went to the Molian, Molian establishment. Although he was the one who opened the business, this kind of thing wasn't very pleasant to discuss. So it was said outside that someone else had opened the shop, and the Wang Fei just had shares in it. For those of you who can't remember, I'm not actually not going to, it's lotions. <laughs> For male wives, in very pretty little boxes. All I'm going to say. Since the store opened, business had been very prosperous. Some people in the capital could see that this business earned money, but no one dared to step into it. This was simply because the establishment bore the name of Chang Wang's household, and the tyrannical Chang Wang was known for being irrational. Mm. Irrational or... Mm. Childish? <laughs> Brother Lin. Shortly after Mu Hanjang entered the store, he saw a familiar figure come in. It was Lin Gongzi of the Marquis's of the Marquis of Ding Nian's household. The Marquis of Ding Nian was the second prince's Wang Fei's oh, Jesus. The Marquis of Dingnan was the second prince's Wang Fei's mother's home. Second prince, which is Jing Chen. His Wang Fei, so first wife, her mother. Okay. <laughs> Due to this, they were considered relatives. Very fucking far apart. Mugunza. When Lin Gangzi saw Mu Hanjang there, he immediately felt a little embarrassed. Mm. Oh, okay, sorry, I need a different voice for this. Uh, okay. The box you gifted last time. Uh, I don't have the face to ask my servants to buy this, so I could only come early by myself. 
Ling Gongzu's husband was the bastard son of the Marquess of Dingnan. The old Marquess still hadn't divided the family. Naturally, he wouldn't give this male wife any power, so it was inconvenient for Ling Gongzu to do anything. Mu Han Jiang immediately understood the difficulty. He turned his head to look at the decorations in the shop. The common people didn't pay much attention. If men came to buy items, they wouldn't be able to tell if they were the husband or the wife, so it didn't matter. For male wives and noble families, however, there was definitely a lot of inconvenience. The cheapest iron box in the store sold the most, and the most expensive silver boxes could also be sold to those hedonistic sons of rich parents who wished to please beauties. The wooden boxes of perfumed ointment weren't selling as well as Muhan Jang thought they would. Muhan Jang considered this, and the cogs in his brain he's so fucking smart, began to turn. Every month, the Imperial Household Department would set aside a quantity for each household and send it over. So, for his customers who still needed the product but were inconvenienced, he could have them pay a set monthly fee, and he would have the products delivered afterwards. He's so smart. He was doing it before Amazon. <laughs> if it is inconvenient for Lindaka, tell me how much you need. At the beginning of each month, I'll send someone with a sealed pack to your residence. You can just say that it's something I sent you. When Muhan Jang came to this conclusion, his mind was lively again. Every month, the household office of the royal palace would deliver the ample stipend on time. He could thus make the households of the princes that were inconvenienced and sorely in need pay money regularly, and he would then send the products to them every month. This will definitely sp this will definitely solve my problem. <laughs> Ling Kong Zhu was very happy with this solution and immediately paid in advance. Mu Han Jiang left the Mo Lian establishment, saw that it was still early, and walked to the Ministry of War's office. Once he arrived in front of the door at exactly Xiao at exactly nine to eleven AM, he saw a figure perfunctually crossing the threshold. Punctually crossing the threshold. Oh Wong Yi, this matter isn't done yet. Why are you leaving already? Minister Sun came out holding a book and helplessly chased after him. You make the decision yourself. I have something urgent to do. I'll talk to you about it later. Jing Xiao waved his hand impatiently at him. When he looked up, he saw his Wang Fei standing outside the door wearing a light blue robe. The sight was so attractive that Jing Xiao couldn't help but draw back the corners of his mouth and rush towards him. Oh, goodness. Thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. <clears throat> I'm gonna continue. Uh, we'll just see how far we go. We'll see how far we get. That's all I'm gonna do, and then I really don't want to split them up. But oh well. We'll do our best. This may have a part two. Oh, all right. Well, we're... It's hard when I'm trying to do the sound effects and I'm giggling because I know what's going to come up and then I can't read. <sighs> Chapter 36. Withdrawal. If there is a war... Jing Xiao will not return for many years, right? Minister Sun looked on helplessly as the Cheng Wang ran to the Cheng Wang Fei and excitedly exclaimed, Jun Qing, let's go eat shrimp. If we go too late, it'll sell out. Was this the so-called urgent matter? 
There were rumors about a cruel, harsh, and ruthless Cheng Wang. So why would he reveal such an expression, smiling so wide that he turned into a flower? Mu Hanjiang saw the white-bearded minister of war awkwardly standing in front of the door and greeted him apologetically. <laughs> you know it's love when he, they're willing to apologize for you. Wang Yi was in a hurry this morning, and I wasn't able to eat. We've caused Minister Darren trouble. Wang Fei is exact. Wang Fei is exaggerating. Only then did Minister Sun snap out of it, and he politely saluted the Cheng Wang Fei. Anyway, he was used to Cheng Wang leaving on the dot at five to seven a.m. Mu Han Zheng smiled and looked at his Wang Yi out. Mu Hanjang smiled and took his Wang Yi out to eat. It was still early. There were basically no guests inside the Huiwei restaurant, but Boss Zhou, who opened early every day, had already cleaned up the shop and was preparing all the ingredients. Jing Xiao asked for a private room overlooking the street on the second floor. The crabs aren't fat enough yet at this time. Oh, sorry. The crabs aren't fat enough at this time. Come back and eat them in September. Because there wasn't much business at the moment, Zhou Jin, all in pink, personally came over to take their order. The two weren't surprised by, Mu Jin, by Zhou Jin's clothes. One caddy of shrimp poached in salt water, one caddy of salt baked shrimp, two caddies of hui wei shrimp, one bottle of... Xiao Xing yellow wine and two bowls of rice. Jing Xiao looked at the menu and said, All of the dishes with the words Hui Wei were the signature dishes of Hui Wei restaurant. Because it wasn't possible to get hold of fresh shrimp all the time, they were rarely able to eat this dish. When eating saltwater shrimp, you shouldn't drink strong alcohol. I'll send up a pot of tea instead. Zhou Jin reminded Jing Xiao. Jing Xiao frowned. It felt like there was a little something missing if he couldn't drink wine while eating something delicious. When Mu Han Zheng saw this, he summoned Jing Xiao's small servant boy, Yong Xin, to buy a bottle of green plum wine from the green plum maiden in the south of the city. Mild wine can detoxify shrimp. Perhaps it would be good if Brother Zhou also bought some mild wine. It would definitely sell well. That's a good idea, Zhou Jin said happily when he heard this. Where is that green plum wine shop you were talking about? Mu Han Jiang told him the location. Even Zhou Jin, who ran a restaurant like this, didn't know about that green plum wine shop. It seemed that Maiden Mei's business truly wasn't good. Since Jing Xiao intended to take care of this green plum girl of his, since Jing Xiao intended to take care of this green plum girl of his brother Wang, who died in battle, it was much more useful to find a way for her to do business rather than to just buy her wine regularly. Jun Qing, you really are good at business. Jing Xiao peeled a poached shrimp and put it in the other's bowl. Mu Han Zhang picked up the shrimp with his chopsticks and dipped it in sauce before taking a bite. He smiled lightly and said, When I was a child, I heard that the descendants of noble families were seldom able to attain scholarly honors in the imperial exam. Even if they did, it wasn't easy to become a court official. Thus, I secretly learned some business skills from Yunang. I thought that if I couldn't be an official then I could instead take over our family's businesses. In general, nobles weren't able to achieve scholarly honors through the imperial exam. They relied on the emperor's benevolence. If they wanted to become officials, they also had to rely on the imperial family's favor. For those who managed to study and test with good results, they were often pushed aside by others, and it was hard to obtain promotions. Mu Hanjiang spoke in a relaxed manner, but Jing Xiao could hear the hardships contained in these few sentences. Dukes, marquises, earls, 
all of them focused on becoming military leaders. A son who couldn't pr practice martial arts would naturally be looked down on by the family. Not to mention Mu Han Jiang being a concubine's son. Thinking this, Jing Xiao recalled Mu Ling Bao. Unfortunately, the weather was getting hotter. It would be another few months before Mu Ling Bao could be thrown into the river. <laughs> Unfortunately, the weather was getting hotter. It would be another few months before Mu Ling Bao could be thrown into the river. The shrimp was deep fried all the way through. It's tasty when eaten with the shell. Mu Han Jiang put a shell. Mu Han Jiang put a shrimp in Jing Xiao's bowl. After we've finished our meal, let's go to the Second Imperial's house and ha ah. Let's go to the Second Imperial brother's house and have a look. I've prepared all the gifts. I'll have Young Ju go back to get them. Now that Jing Xiao had stressed the importance of filial piety in court today, there was nothing suspicious about there was nothing suspicious about paying his wounded brother a visit. Even if you didn't believe in those villains' allegations, there was the so-called if you lied too much, then it would become real. It was still better for the two brothers to visit each other frequently. Jing Xiao also planned to go to the second prince's mansion today to tell his brother the good news of their imperial father conferring the title of Ru Wuyang, of Rui Wang, Wang, upon him. Blah. Every time he visited, he went empty-handed, but would always have but would always leave with some good thing from his brother. Only now did Jing Xiao realize that he should bring gifts when visiting his brother's house. When they arrived, Jing Chen was discussing things with several advisors in his study. Hearing that Jing Xiao had come, he let him in directly. There were three people in the room, none of whom Jing Xiao had seen often. Mu Han Jiang stood beside him, quietly observing the expressions of these people, then lowered his eyes. The three advisors seemed very nervous about their sudden arrival, and one of them revealed an obvious hint of hostility. That will be all for today. Jing Chen frowned a little and waved the three out. Jing Chen took a glance at Mu Han Jiang. Under Jing Xiao's eyes, which signaled that he didn't need to hide anything, he withdrew his gaze and said in a deep voice, You did a good job in court today. Mu Han Jiang was slightly surprised. He had planned to leave first, but unexpectedly the two brothers were discussing court affairs in front of him. Doing this showed that the two brothers really regarded him as trustworthy, even if he were one of as if he were one of them, and helping them scheme to win the throne. He turned his head and glanced at Jing Xiao. The other gave him an airy look. In the current situation, the Southwest King has angered Imperial Father. Withdrawing the vassal states will happen sooner or later, but you can't mention this matter. I will let the rest of the court bring it up first. I'll return to court after a couple of days, and then submit a statue to the Imperial Father again. Jing Xiao showed Jing, oh, Jing Chen showed Jing Xiao a stack of folded paper. Will this method work? Jing Xiao looked through it for a long time. Generally speaking, this method of withdrawing the vassal states without mobilizing the army was very complicated. In his past life, he had been in Yunnan, Tibet. Thus, he didn't know if anyone had suggested a, fe a peaceful withdrawal of the vassal territories. However, given the Southwest King's character, perhaps a battle shouldn't be fought. Brother-in-law, have a look. Jing Chen beckoned Jing Xiao to give it to Mu Hanjiang. Brother, just call Brother can just call me Han Jiang. Mu Hanjiang took the statute read it quickly, and thought for a moment. If the vassal king's forces aren't strong, then this plan is feasible. 
Jing Chen nodded slightly and looked at Jing Xiao. If a war is started, do you want to go? Go, Jing Xiao said resolutely. This is a good chance to obtain military leadership. If it drags on for a few years, then one can gain control of at least half of it. If war was declared on the three vassal states, he wasn't sure how many years the battle would take. Even if Jing Xiao knew each, each vassal king's weak points, he didn't plan to finish it immediately. He wouldn't, re he wouldn't repeat the mistakes he made in his last life, but only dispose of the kings once they had served their purpose. Mu Hanjang listened to the dialogue between the two brothers, and his gaze shuddered as he kept silent. If there was a war, Jing Xiao wouldn't return home for many years, right? The next day, there was news of the eldest prince, who had finally been rescued by the Shu army. Alrighty. I'm going to pause this and go check on some things, and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, and we're recording once again. Uh, headbooks, I'm back. You're gonna hear. You may hear some crunching in the background. Uh, we're currently going through a heat wave. And so uh, the only way to cool off is for me to put like a brownie tin full of ice in front of the fan so that the fan blows cold air. Um, but Yui, my baby Yui, loves his ice coops. Thank you. <sighs> so you're going to hear some crunching of him going into the ice bucket and Crunching his ice cubes. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for... <laughs> so, but he's got a really little mouth and can only chew, like, and it's... Our ice cubes aren't the big squares, they're the little thin ones. And so he can only eat one at a time. He's so cute. So, uh, yeah, pretend you don't hear the crunching. <laughs> All right. I completely forget where we were. <laughs> He's such a good boy. And I love, although I got home today and he was just a little dink. He wouldn't leave me alone. He kept bringing me toys and hitting me with them. <laughs> like, I know what you want, but I'm tired. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Ah, uh, ba ba da ba da. Let's move. Okay. I'm just going to go right from the top of this page. Because I cannot quite remember. I cannot at all remember where we were. <sighs> Try to catch my breath. The next day, there was news of the eldest prince, who had finally been rescued by the Shu army. Fortunately, he hadn't died. Or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it. He was temporarily resting in Yan'an, Tibet. As for the king of the southwest, his troops didn't move as fast as the Shu's. This move completely infuriated Emperor Hongzheng. Many ministers took the opportunity to propose to take back the vassal territories. After a few days of such debate, when Jing Chen returned to court, he directly submitted his statute on withdrawing the vassal territories. Jing Chen proposed to demote the vassals. That was to say, to present vassal kings would still the present vassal kings would still rule the region but the next generations would be demoted to dukes of the state and the generation after that would be and the generation after that would be demoted to marquis emperor hong jang thought this method was feasible but it didn't reveal his thoughts on the surface only when the ministers mentioned it again 
did he agree to withdraw the vassal states. Thereafter, the matter of Yunnan Tibet was put on hold, and the matter of withdrawing the vassal states was put on the agenda. In June, Chu Yinang was promoted to second wife, and the North Marquess invited Jing Xiao and Mu Han Zhang to the ceremony. <laughs> Some days ago, Yinang had people send word. She wants me to go see her after today's ceremony. Sitting in the carriage, Mu Han Zhang thought of the letter that his mother had sent to the Mu Lian establishment. Then she must have something personal to tell you. Jing Xiao chuckled. Just go. I'll wait for you in the front hall. The ceremony for promotion to second wife wasn't complicated. It was mainly to change the concubine contract to that of a marriage contract, followed by a bow and a sacrificial offering to the ancestors. Having become the second wife, Lady Chu moved into the small courtyard with more status. The rooms were more spacious, and the place had a small kitchen of its own. Mu Hanjang looked at his mother in her splendid pink clothes. Although she was already getting on in years, she was still as elegant and graceful as ever, embodying the wit and gentleness of the J of Jinan girls. Of Jiangnan girls. Mother. For the first time, Mu Han Jang could call her this in front of others. Lady Chu's eyes moistened at this one word. Son, my son. Lady Chu took her son's hand, her tears falling like stray pearls from a broken necklace. For twenty years, she had dared not call him son. He was a young master, and she was just a lowly concubine. If she ran into him in the past, she had to salute the young master. Seeing this situation, the maids in the room retreated, one after another. Mother, why were you looking for me? Muhan Jang took the handkerchief from his mother's hand and wiped her tears. Lady Chu took the handkerchief from her son, wiped the tears on her face, and sighed. In the inner court, my imagination cannot help running wild. There is a, a matter I've been thinking about for a long time, but I, I think I should tell you about it. Mu Hanjang listened quietly to his mother's worries and couldn't help but smile. Don't worry, mother. He doesn't want to sit on the throne. Who doesn't want to take that seat? Lady Chu frowned and saw that Mu Han Jang seemed to believe in Jing Xiao very much. Even if he didn't have that intention before, he is a prince, but has no offspring to inherit his title. How can he be willing? Besides, he's still so young, and there will be many opportunities to go out and fight in the future. Regarding the other points, Mu Hanjang didn't take them to heart, but the last one resonated strongly with him, recalling what he had heard in the second prince's mansion that day. Jing, Jing Xiao wanted to use that expedition to obtain military power. The three vassal kings weren't easy to deal with. It would take at least three to five years before he could return to the capital. Did that mean... He would have to wait several years for Jing Xiao in the palace, withering away in the meantime. I always hate that when you you're you're in the middle of a chapter, it's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna go and do this real quick, and then you get come back and you realize how little of a chapter you actually had to finish. Ah, I should have looked. It doesn't matter. I would have been tempted to end it. And I want to see if I can get to chapter 39. I'm feeling good. I love you, baby. I'm feeling good. But I just came to the end of my buble. So let me toss that. I've got a little water left. And I really want to continue. This will be 
our longest episode yet. <coughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, let me just, I'm still parched. <clears throat> I really wish it were faster. My stream deck it takes forever to switch pages. Oh, we're on a roll. Let's do this. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Am I recording? I can't believe I've gotten through all of that and just that one that went by really quickly. Okay. <laughs> Chapter thirty seven Summons. According to the decree of Empress, Prince Xuan Cheng went to Feng Yi Palace immediately. Xuan Cheng. Xuan Cheng. Have we met Xuan Cheng? Do we know who that is? I don't remember that. Okay. Hmm. In the sixth month of the thirteenth year of Hong Zheng, the imperial court sent Fan Ji, the imperial censor, to the southwest fiefdom to read out the imperial edict on the demotion of the vassal kings. The southwest, the southwest king refused to accept it and wrote a petition to justify himself. Oh, shit. <laughs> Listen to this. In the seventh month, which is one month later, the Southwest King beheaded Fan Ji. This. Jesus. The special envoy from the Imperial Court. The special envoy from the Imperial Court and named himself King, shocking all of society. Emperor Hong Jiang finally decided to send troops to subdue the Southwest. This fucker needs to go. Who's saying this? Oh my god. Oh. I heard my father-in-law say that... Oh, sorry. Wrong one. That was the mother. I heard my... F I heard my father-in-law say that the southwest terrain is arduous, easy to, easy to defend, but hard to attack. Moreover, the southwest king is very cunning and skillful. He's good at using ambush strategies, with his troops appearing suddenly, which is very difficult to deal with. Duchess Mao whispered to the Empress. Empress Wu continued to gaze upon the pomegranate flowers blooming in front of her and frowned slightly. This time, the Emperor wants to send 100,000 soldiers. If he has Cheng Wang go, I'm afraid it would be inappropriate. It's not easy to win a battle in that miserable place in the southwest, said Duchess Mao, recalling her husband's words carefully. No, I was right the first time. All right, I'm going to redo that. That was wrong. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I don't know why I thought that was the daughter-in-law. Because even though she's the front, fourth princess, she would still be Wang Fei, not Duchess. So I got that mixed up. Okay. But her father-in-law is still alive. Jesus. Okay. Well, I'm imagining an old guy, I guess. I heard my father-in-law say that the southwest terrain is arduous, easy to defend, but hard to attack. Moreover, the southwest king is very cunning and skillful. He's good at using ambush strategies with his troops appearing suddenly, which is very difficult to deal with. Duchess Mao whispered to the Empress. Empress Wu continued to gaze upon the pomegranate flowers blooming in front of her and frowned slightly. This time, the Emperor wants to send 100,000 soldiers. If he has Chang Wango, I'm afraid it would be inappropriate. It's not easy to win a battle in that miserable place in the southwest. 
said Duchess Mel, recalling her husband's words carefully. That's where the confusion was. Once withdrawing the vassal states begins, I'm afraid we'll have to withdraw all three. When we have to fight the king of Hunan, have the fourth prince go then. The terrain in Jingnan is flat. As long as there are enough soldiers and horses, then the attack should be successful. When the empress heard these words, she nodded slightly. Duchess Mao inwardly sighed with relief. The southwest was easy to defend and difficult to attack. They didn't know how long this war would last. Her daughter was betrothed to the fourth prince. She would have to stay at home if her husband went to war. By the time the fourth prince came back, her daughter would have become an old and yellow pearl. At that time, the fourth prince would likely acquire a few concubines of high birth, and in the future, even if her daughter became empress, which she fucking won't, she wouldn't, pa she wouldn't pass her days easily. There is one more thing. She doesn't know if it's appropriate to speak of it or not. Duchess Mao hesitated a little as she clasped her hands together. There are no outsiders here. Don't worry about being proper or not. The Empress raised her head to pick a bright red pomegranate flower, a sneer on her lips. At that time, she had also cautiously and solemnly served Empress Yan, saying things like, Xin Qi doesn't know if it's proper to say or not. But it was because she wore a pomegranate flower that she was accused of violating the rules. Empress Yun had punished her by having her kneel in front of Feng Yi Palace during the hottest period of summer for two hours. She heard that Cheng Wang sent a concubine to the fourth prince last month said Duchess Mao, looking carefully at the Empress's expression. Seeing that she wasn't angry, she continued, Naturally, Chi shouldn't be meddling in these matters. But the fourth prince is officially getting married next month. However, there are rumors in the capital that the fourth prince really dotes on that woman. No one knew how this news had gotten out. In any case, the North Marquis had found out, Everyone gossiped about how the fourth prince had yet to be officially married, but was already spoiling a lowly concubine. And they jeered that even after the duchess's daughter married the fourth prince, she wouldn't be able to live a good life. The woman who had lost, her, the woman who had lost face because her daughter hadn't been chosen to be the Wang Fei, once again mingled with the noble wives in a celebratory air angering Duchess Mao so much that she couldn't stomach two meals. Is that the case? The Empress crushed the pomegranate flower in her hand, took the silk handkerchief from the palace maid, and wiped her hand clean. I'll call Jing Yu over to ask him about it later. You can rest assured that Beng Gong will not let the official wife of the prince be wronged. The weather in July was very hot. Oh, page break. After practicing for a short while, Jing Xiao's brows were already beaded with sweat. He quickly took off his sweat-soaked clothes and ran under the shade of a tree, his chest bare. He took the wet cloth, he took the wet cloth towel from Ji Xi and wiped his face, then sat down next to his Wang Fei. The sun is so fierce, don't practice any more. Sitting on a rattan couch and enjoying the cool air, Mu Han Jiang handed him a piece of watermelon. Jing Xiao gnawed on the watermelon in his hand and finally felt cooler. This watermelon tastes ice cold. It's really soothing. Wang Fei had this servant soak it in the well early in the morning. Mao Xi said with a smile, and replaced the plate on the table with a new plate of freshly cut watermelon. Yan Ju switched to a bigger fan as he fanned the couple from behind. 
When I was practicing with my sword, I suddenly remembered that it, that it was Fan Ji whom Imperial Father sent. That was definitely on purpose. Jing Xiao ate another another slice of watermelon. How can you be sure? Oh, remember Fan Ji is the Imperial Censor that was beheaded. How can you be sure? Mu Hanjiang leaned on the back of the couch and turned a page in the book he was holding. Fenji doesn't beat around the bush and would die for the sake of speaking out. Father Emperor always has the urge to splatter dragon columns with the man's blood, and just doesn't know what to do with him. Okay, so he had it coming. <laughs> Thinking about the Southwest King, that treacherous little person, trembling with anger because of Fanji, Jing Xiao couldn't help but muffle his laugh. Muhan Jiang took a look at the young one. Mu Han Jiang took a look at the Wang Yi, who didn't mourn that loyal martyr of a minister, and shook his head helplessly. He died for his country, which will fulfill Fan Duren's desire to remain famous for thousands of years to come. Jing Xiao ate three slices of watermelon, wiped his hands, then leaned back against his Wang Fei gazing at the specks of sunlight shining through the leaves. A cool wind was blowing gently, and he began to feel sleepy. What did Imperial Father talk to you about today? The big head resting on Mu Han Jiang's abdomen kept puffing air against his lower abdomen. Feeling uncomfortable, Mu Han Jiang moved his body so that Jing Xiao rested on his leg, and he waved his hand to signal the maids and Yun Ju to retreat. Huh. He said he was getting me a second wife. I can't believe he actually found someone and wants me to marry... I can't believe he actually found someone and wants me to marry the Empress's niece, Jing Xiao sneered. The Empress seemed to have gotten extremely angry over him giving concubine Yan to Jing Yu. So she wanted him to marry the daughter of the Count of Yongcheng, which sickened him. Mu Hanjang's hands on the book paused. Then what did you say? I said. Only then did Jing Xiao realize that his position had changed. So he turned over discontentedly to press his face into, into Jun Qing's lower abdomen, deliberately rubbing it with the tip of his nose. Oh god, that would tickle so bad. <laughs> I only like men now. I can't muster up any interest in women. <clears throat> the feeling was unexpectedly accentuated by the cloth between them. Mu Hanjang sighed lightly and shifted back to escape Jing Xiao's movements. How can you say that? Imperial Father would definitely be angry. It's better than letting them force women on me. Peaked, Jing Xiao chased after him and used, <laughs> and used the side of his face to press down lightly on little Jing Chen, <laughs> on little Jin Ching. Mu Han Jiang frowned, took that big head in his hands, and moved it to the jade pillow beside him. To put it simply, it was too hot. I love them so much, I can't even. <laughs> Jing Xiao grimaced with discontent. He jumped up, picked up the weapon on the side, and began to practice again. Again. Ugh. Mu Han Jiang watched Jing Xiao working hard and gradually smiled. Imperial Father had summoned Jing Xiao alone a few days ago. The expedition to the southwest was almost beyond Jing Xiao's control, and his departure was imminent. In the last few days, he hadn't appeared the least bit sad about having to leave. Perhaps leaving home to battle was a common thing for Jing Xiao. But seeing him so focused on the upcoming war, Mu Hanjang couldn't help but feel a little sad in his heart. Wang Yi, Wang Fei, people from the palace have come. Do Fu hurried into the garden. Who? Jing Xiao put away the silver spear in his hands. It's Do Lu from the Empress. Do Fu's round face wrinkled up, wrinkled up resentfully. He and Do Lu entered the palace at the same time. 
When he served Empress Yun, Do Lu had just been a little eunuch under concubine Shu in the Imperial Palace. Now that concubine Shu had, succe had succeeded the late Empress, that brat dared to put on airs whenever he saw him. Invite him in, Mu Hanjang handed Jing Xiao his outer clothes. Soon, a skinny eunuch came in. Though he saluted them, there was some unconcealed arrogance in his expression. Jing Xiao frowned. Gong Gong, you're here. Is there something the matter with Mother Empress? The Empress has put forth an imperial decree for Cheng Wang Fei to go to Feng Yi Palace immediately. Do Lu's slightly shrill voice was rather painful to listen to. At this hour? Jing Xiao frowned. It was just afternoon. Was the Empress not taking an afternoon nap? Being an Empress's hard work, apparently. Calling for Jing... Calling for Jen Qing in such a hurry definitely wasn't for something good. Mu Hanjang pursed his lips. The Empress had never called him to the palace after he got married, likely due to his male status. Jing Xiao had just rejected the court, the Count of Yong Cheng's daughter, as a second wife today, and the Empress had rushed to call Mu Hanjang to the palace. Presumably, she wanted to start a fight or just take out her anger on him. Chen will change my clothes and come back. Please wait a moment, Gong Gong. Wait a minute! Jing Xiao, head, he, Jing Xiao held Mu Han Jiang back and stared at the empty-headed Lo Du. Du, <laughs> du Lu, Dao Lu. N did Mother Empress say what the matter was about? This servant did not dare inquire replied Dao Lu. Knowing that Cheng Wang was a tough one, he softened his tone. The Empress only requested the presence of the Wang Fei. She may just want to chat with the Wang Fei about family life. Wang Yi doesn't have to worry. Jing Xiao didn't believe that, demean that demanding a visit from Jun Qing was just for a chat. However, even if the Empress made an imperial decree and didn't say clearly what it was for, it couldn't be openly disobeyed. Jing Xiao followed his Wang Fei into the room, took out his Jing Xiao followed his Wang Fei into the room, took out his court uniform, and also began to change. I'll go with you. How would you get into the palace at this time? Mu Hanjang stopped Jing Xiao's actions. Visiting his empress mother in the morning and evening was fine, but if Jing Xiao went to Feng Yi Palace without being summoned, Mu Hanjang feared it would cause trouble. Don't worry, I can deal with anything. That Do Lu had specially emphasized that only Cheng Wang Fei was to go m meant that Jing Xiao was not to come. Jing Xiao watched coldly as his Wang Fei followed Dou Lu into the palace carriage. He pulled Mao Xi over and instructed, Go with the Wang Fei. If anything happens, immediately go to the southern study room to find me. Mao Xi, who had... Mao Xi had been born in a pal as a palace maid. She was clever and familiar with the routes around the palace. Mao Xi listened nodded heavily, and quickly followed Mu Hanjang. The southern study room was where the young princes who had not yet come of age studied, and the only place that Jing Xiao could hang around at this hour. Emperor Hong Zheng attached great importance to filial piety and encouraged the adult princes to teach their younger brothers when they had the time. However, the emperor's heart was truly difficult to fathom. If they went too frequently, they would also be suspected of trying to pull these brothers to their factions. Thus, the four brothers seldom went to the southern study room after leaving the palace to build their own residences. After the carriage left, Jing Xiao followed at a distance on Xiao He. When the carriage entered the palace gates, he turned his horse around and entered through another side gate. <laughs> Wang Yi? Mm. 
Sorry, your ears just burning. Wang Yi, why did you come to the palace at this time? Xiao Chun, the patrolling guard, spotted Jing Xiao and hurriedly greeted him. Xiao Cheng, a distant relative of the Marquis of Dingnan's family, was fr on friendly terms with Jing Xiao. Xiao Chun! Jing Xiao put his arm around the commander's neck, pulled him aside, and stuffed a large, egg sized pisu into his hands. If a maid runs out of Feng Yi Palace headed towards the southern study room later, please let her through. If there's any trouble, I'll take care of it. Xiao Chun was originally still a little hesitant. When he heard this last sentence, he felt reassured and put the Pi Xu into his clothes. Don't worry, Wang Yi. That's a small matter. It was commonplace for maids to walk around the palace. Unless it was under orders from the palace nobles, there was no reason they would be denied egress. Hooey. I got two more to, to go, and I'm going to do it. Oh, the bugs here are fucking awful. I'm just going to say it. I got a bug bite on my boob, and it's fucking... Ugh. Fucking... I can't... <laughs> I'm just sitting here itching. It's awful. Blah. And it's right where my top ends. So it's... Blah. Okay. Well, why is my avatar doing that? I only covered my mouth. Let me see if it'll do it again. Okay. No. <laughs> For those of you listening to the podcast, and yes, I'm going to read this out, books just <laughs> let us know, oh my god, I just itched my, itched my boob too. Weird. <laughs> I'm just, I kind of, huge freaking mosquito bite like right on the ah uh, right up on the top and it's so itchy it's awful oh goodness <laughs> that's funny because i didn't know that anyone was still listening <laughs> okay i'm gonna do two more i'm gonna do it we are going to finish oh, we are going to finish volume one tonight there's only two more chapters to go we can do it we can do this. Do it. Chapter 38. Kneeling Punishment. Ben Gong wants to see how capable he is to become a king. And it's weird. This is one scene that always really stuck with me. And it was the first time I can do this. <laughs> and it was the first time when I was reading this, it was the first time I really went, oh, they get each other. And I don't know why this was the scene for me. I think I probably skipped a lot of the beginning scenes because, again, I had run, read the manga instead of reading from the beginning because I clearly missed a hell of a lot. Um, there's something about this one that I really like. Okay. Let's hope we can get to it. Whew. There were limestone slabs in front of the Empress, Empress's Feng Yi Palace, and it was an empty place completely free of any vegetation. The white marble stone steps gave off an imposing air. At this quiet time of day, just after noon, people walking up the steps would feel a deep sense of oppression. Yeah, because there's so many fucking steps. Muhan Jang followed the eunuch to the front of the main hall. I can, yeah, I can, okay, so... Before I forget to ask this, do you want to raid someone at the end? It can help introduce you to other bookish Twitch peeps. Not required, of course, but I thought I'd check. I I always, like, I like to do raids. I usually wait to have more people than just me. <laughs> so, yeah, if if you're still, still here by the end, or and especially if we get more people, more than happy to raid. But it's I, f I feel like raiding is like eating alone. <laughs> Slightly embarrassing when it's just you. Um, so yeah, so when we get to the end of this, I am more than happy to raid someone, absolutely. If you have any suggestions, 
We're gonna be here a little while longer. I expect to be done this probably around 10, I would say maybe 10, 40 or so. Sweet. All right, yes. We will check in again when we're done. Oh, and remind me. Because <laughs> my memory is not 100%. I'm sorry. I can't seem to help it. I'll, I'll hide it. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're here. Muhan Jang followed the eunuch to the front of the main hall. Maybe it was because of the hot weather that the Empress had placed a phoenix couch on the veranda instead of staying in the hall. Nope, bitch is up to something. Two maids holding peacock fans with long handles slowly fanned the empress from behind the couch. She was dressed in a magnificent robe with phoenixes outlined in gold. Sitting upright on the phoenix couch, she watched Muhan Jang come up the jade steps one by one. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wei Chen greets Mother Empress and wishes Mother Empress a thousand years and wishes Mother Empress a thousand years of life. Mu Hanjang calmly walked to the below the veranda and knelt down to give his salutations. The Empress picked up her teacup, took a sip, then gracefully picked up her handkerchief to dab at the corners of her mouth. Then, neither too quickly nor slowly, she said, Get up. Quickly come and sit down. You are the treasure of Chang Wang's heart. If you're injured from kneeling for too long, Ben Gong won't be able to compensate for it. You're fucking right. Mu Han Jang's gaze was restrained, as if he couldn't hear the irony in the Empress's words. He thanked her politely and sat on a square stool which the palace maid brought over. The way that Chang Wang Fei acted was completely unlike what the Empress had expected. He wasn't anxious or flustered. When told to sit, he sat, his conduct and etiquette impeccable. The reprimand she had been preparing to unleash upon him was forcibly choked down. Because this bitch, you're not as smart. When Jing Xiao entered the Southern Imperial Study Room, the young princes had just woken up from their afternoon nap. Aw, prince babies. But had yet to start their afternoon lessons. Currently, they were quietly reviewing their lessons and waiting for their teacher to arrive. Because the weather was getting hotter, Emperor Hong Zheng had excused the princes from their afternoon martial arts class and replaced it with a literature class. Standing outside the study, Jing Xiao looked at these children, who weren't even ten years old yet reading the books in their hands with serious expressions. Jing Xiao remembered when he had been in the southern study as a child. At that time, his mother empress had still been here, and every day at this time, she would send people in with fresh melons and fruits, not only for him and his elder brother, but also his eldest brother and Jing Yu. Jing Yu always thought that the fruit someone else had was better than his. Because he was young, he often wanted to switch with his brothers. If his brothers didn't want to bicker with him, they would do the exchange. But Jing Xiao himself hadn't liked it. If Jing Yu went too far, he would beat him up with his fists. As you should in that situation. Later, after the new empress ascended, there were no longer any fruits or melons to eat in the afternoon. After that, no new princes were born in the palace for a long time. When the eldest prince left the palace to build his own residence, it was only the three of them left in the study. Every day, Jing Yu would be sent special pastries and fruits and melons, but there was only one portion. This bitch. Third brother! Jing Xiao's thoughts were interrupted by the sound of a milky voice. He lowered his head and saw a little fatty, 
who only reached his thigh pulling at his clothes. It was Jing Yi. What? Oh, Jing Yi. It was Jing Yi, the seventh prince. Jing Xiao reached down and rubbed his head. He called, Jing Yi. The little fatty immediately smiled until his eyes couldn't be seen. Third brother, you can still recognize me. It's not like I haven't seen you for years. How could I not recognize you? Jing Xiao didn't know whether to laugh or cry and picked him up. Brat, did you get fatter again? Jing Xiao remembered Jing Yi better because the boy still was still rather chubby, even after growing up a bit. He didn't see his younger brothers often, so if some other brother had pulled at him, he could only try to calculate their rank based on their age. Third brother? Several of the others in the room turned their heads, one after another. Oh, I'm sorry. Third brother? Several of the others in the room turned their heads one after another when they heard the noise, and they all stood up. I just dropped in to have a look because it was on my way. You guys can go back on reading. Jing Xiao waved at them to sit back down. Third brother, I heard that you defeated 100,000 Xiong Yu. When I saw you during the New Year, I wanted to hear about your fighting a war, but you sat up in the front and I couldn't go over. Zhang Yi became emboldened since his brother was holding him. After he was put down, he didn't return to his seat. He tugged at Jing Xiao and wouldn't let go, wanting him to talk about his achievements on the battlefield. The other princes didn't say anything out loud, but their eyes were full of anticipation. Third brother, do all the Xiong Zhu have big beards? Third brother, are there packs of wolves in the desert? Third brother! When Emperor Hong Zheng entered, he saw Jing Xiao surrounded by several of his imperial younger brothers, a rare expression of helplessness on his face. The Emperor's own face couldn't help but relax slightly. Oh, they're babies. Replying to Mother Empress, whether or not Wang Yi accepts concubines is his decision to make. Chen has no say in this. Mu Hanjang bowed his head politely. He only answered the Empress's increasingly cutting words with a mild tone, not saying a single unnecessary thing. He said training from his stepmother. You are older than Wang Yi. Are you not able to advise him? You can see for yourself that he's about to go to war, and he still doesn't have a son or even a daughter. Doesn't this mean that such a high-ranking prince has no successor to inherit his title? In any case, are you not a successful candidate in the provincial, provincial imperial examination? How come you don't understand this kind of thing? The Empress swirled the tea leaves in her cup. For Jing Xiao to say that he only liked men, did that mean that all of the concubines in Cheng Wing's residence before were just decoration? No, they were just conniving bitches. The Emperor had said in the Imperial Study today that he would have Jing Xiao accept her niece as a second wife. But Jing Xiao claimed that he didn't like women. This was clearly a blatant slap to her face. Because you a bitch. What was this just-in-case attitude? What was this about having no heir? Don't think this on the eve of departure. This was the most taboo topic before going to war. Mu Hanjang had been holding himself back until now, but his hands slowly balled into fists in his sleeves when he heard this. The prince is not exempt from the rules of succession. Even if he has a son from a second wife, he can only inherit the title of general. The empress slammed her cup down on the table. What are you trying to say? Are you blaming Ben Gong? Blaming his majesty? Blaming his majesty? Hearing this, all the maids around them knelt one after another. Chen does not dare. Chen does not dare. Wu Hanjang quickly got up and knelt on the ground. You're still saying that you don't dare? 
As a Wong Fei of the Imperial family, you push away concubines and selfishly covet the prince's favor for yourself. Now you won't even let the prince leave heirs. You truly are presumptuous. The Empress's words were aggressive, each of them a stab to the heart. Liu Hunjang remained silent. In this situation, the Empress's rage clearly stemmed from humiliation. The more he said, the more fault she would try to find with him. After that, the Empress took a handkerchief from a palace maid and wiped away the tea that had splashed on her hands. She shot the kneeling Mu Han Jang a glance and sighed softly. <sighs> ben Gong doesn't want to make things difficult for you. But since you've married into the Imperial family, you must consider the good of the Imperial family. Here, go kneel on the Jade Terrace. When you've pondered and understood, then you may get up. Hearing these words, Mu Hanjang couldn't help but laugh bitterly to himself. Ponder until he understood. The Empress hadn't even told him what to reflect on. Why did she want him to ponder until he understood? The Jade Terrace was the flat ground above the Jade Steps in front of the palace. The white marble had been exposed to the scorching sun for several hours, and had long become as hot as burning coals. Muhan Jang gracefully and easily lifted the hem of his robe and knelt in the center of a stone slab. It was an afternoon in the middle of summer, when the sun was at its strongest. The heat beating down on bare flesh would start to hurt very quickly. The Empress had all of the palace servants get up. She then picked up another cup of newly steeped tea and drank it leisurely, leaving the Wang Fei alone to kneel and receive his punishment. She wanted to see if this love stronger than gold, which the Cheng Wang and Cheng Wang Fei, that the Cheng Wang and Cheng Wang Fei shared. Bitch, cause you know you ain't never gonna be loved like that. Fuck you. Mao Xi stood behind the row of palace maids, worried but unable to find an opportunity to leave. Sweat trickled down the corners of Sweat trickled down the contours of Mu Han Jang's handsome face to his elegant chin, and dipped onto his purple court clothes. He lowered his eyes and unconsciously drew his hands back into his sleeves. The sun was in the south, and only his back was exposed to it, so he was unlikely to go as far as get a sunburn. How cruel, though, that the court uniforms had more than one layer— and they were already soaked through with sweat. The heat radiating off the scalding stone slabs seeped into his body little by little. Mu Han Jang pondered the purpose of the Empress's little ploy today so as to distract himself and reduce his body's sense of pain. Today, Jing Xiao had directly refused to take a second wife. The Emperor hadn't forced him into anything, and the Empress felt that she had lost face. With this act, she wanted to make it clear to others that, in the Imperial harem and in her court, she had the final say. It was also a way of lashing back at Jing Xiao for speaking nonsense. After the Empress drank her second cup of tea, she couldn't help but get up and go to the bathroom. Sweat clung to Muhan Jang's long and delicate eyelashes, and the scene in front of him suddenly distorted in colorful waves. Despite his suffering, he happily realized that perhaps the Empress just wanted to take revenge and didn't know how to wrap up this situation herself. What a pity he was a man. He wasn't like those imperial concubines who were weak and short of vitality. He reckoned that even if he knelt under the sun until it went down, the Empress would still be dissatisfied with the outcome. Perhaps he should pretend to faint and help her find a way out of the situation. 
Mao Xu seized the opportunity to leave with the maid who went to change out the tea in the water room and retreated. Turning to the corridor, Mao Xi quickly ducked to one side. She waited until no one was paying attention before running out quickly. She walked the halls in the palace since she was a child and knew it like the back of her hand. However, the path to the southern study room seemed endless today. Mao Xi was so anxious and her brow beaded with sweat, but she didn't dare run too fast for fear of looking suspicious to the guards. A man, always so modest and gentle as Jade, whom Wang Yi couldn't bear to say even a single harsh word to. Now that man was being forced to kneel on a stone slab under the scorching sun. When Wang Yi found out, wouldn't his heart hurt to death? Urchen has always wholeheartedly wanted to help the Imperial Father maintain peace in the whole country. As for giving you heirs and grandsons, I have my two imperial brothers, not to mention fourth imperial brother who's going to be officially married next month. Jing Xiao saw that his imperial father was in a good mood today. Recalling that Zhen Qing was still at Feng Yi Palace, he put on an honest and sincere face. Er Chen and Wang Fei haven't even been married for four months, but now Er Chen truly loves him very much. Urchin honestly does not want to accept any new wives. <laughs> A third son, who only knew how to wholeheartedly lead soldiers into battle, had now unexpectedly tasted passionate love. Emperor Hongjang could not help laughing freely when he heard this. Wang Yi! Wang Yi! Mao Xi stumbled in and was stopped by the guards at the front door of the study. Jing Xiao and Emperor Hong Zheng both turned to look. Mao Xi! When Jing Xiao saw her expression, he knew something had happened to Zhen Qing, and his face suddenly changed. What happened? Emperor Hong Zheng frowned and motioned for the Imperial Guard to let her in. This maidservant kowtows to the Emperor! When Mao Xi saw Emperor Hong Zheng, she plopped down to her knees and kowtowed, then cried, Begging Emperor to help Wang Fei! Wang Fei has been punished to kneel in front of Feng Yi Palace! He has already been kneel kneeling in the sun for two hours! Empress, that maid from Cheng Wang's residence is gone. Dou Lu whispered to the Empress's ear after looking around. This servant also just heard that Chang Wang has entered the palace and is in the southern study. The empress sneered. Let her go. Feng Gong wants to see just how capable this Chang Wang is. Mu Han Jiang was kneeling not far away and naturally could clearly hear her words. He couldn't help but worry. If Jing Xiao recklessly intruded into Feng Yi Palace, that would be a great crime. These servants, yeah. these servants greet the emperor, wish and wish the emperor ten thousand years of life. All of a sudden, the imperial guards and maids under the jade steps all knelt down and shouted, "Long live the emperor!" When the Empress heard this, her hand shook, and the green jade teacup suddenly fell to the ground with a sharp and clear sound. Jun Jing! Jing Xiao excused himself from his father and rushed up the jade steps in a few strides. Face lowered face lowered at this time, Mu Han Zheng's lips gently curled up in a cold smile when he heard the noise. Since the emperor had come, then as the saying went, either don't start anything or see it all the way through. He might as well blow up the situation. Thus, he lifted his head weakly and glanced at Jing Xiao who was approaching him. He called out softly in a hoarse voice, Wang Yi. Then he closed both eyes and began to fall backwards. I love them. I love them so much. 
so much. So big loves. All right, this is the last chapter. Let me hydrate. Mm -hmm. mm. That's good to know. I don't know why that's unexpected to me, but it's good to know. Mm. <clears throat> If you're wondering, Buble does not go bad, even if it's been left out and in a hot room for a few days. Good to know. <sighs> Alrighty. <clears throat> okay, last one. Oh wait, let me just... Oh. I think my timeline is right, and this will be done by about 10.40 or so, depending on how long this sits. Alrighty. Whew. And we're getting through it. This is great. It's great. Right. But, okay, let's do this. Chapter 39 forgot to say. Oh, I remember this. <laughs> Please remember, Jing Xiao is a bit of an idiot. Jing Xiao stared blankly as Mu Han Jiang toppled over and felt his heart clench fiercely. Using his Qinggong, he suddenly flew forward and gathered Mu Han Jiang up in his arms in one movement. Chen Qing! Chen Qing! The body in his embrace was completely soaked with sweat, which seeped into his clothes. His sweaty, handsome face was as white as a sheet. Move him to the couch! Emperor Hong Jang didn't let the Empress, who was in a half-crouch to give her salutations, get up. He pointed to where the phoenix couch was cool under the veranda and motioned for Jing Xiao to place Mu Han Jang on it. On the other side of the veranda, An Xin said, Fetch the Imperial Physician. Jing Xiao carefully put Mu Han Jiang on the phoenix couch, took a cool herbal tea from the servant, and brought it to the other man's cracked lips, slowly feeding it to him. Mao Xi picked up a fan from the side and wiped away her tears as she fanned Mu Han Jiang. Imperial Father. Jing Xiao picked up his Wang Fei's hand, his eyes red with rage. He turned around to look at Emperor Hong Jiang behind him. He hadn't finished speaking when Mu Han Jiang suddenly pinched his palm, so he immediately stopped talking and turned back to look at the person on the couch. In Emperor Hong Jiang's eyes, Jing Xiao was already extremely angry. Jing Xiao wanted to say something, but considered his but considering his identity, he couldn't denounce his imperial mother and thus could only hesitate and swallow his words. He looked the very definition of someone who had been wronged. Emperor Hong Jiang frowned, sat down in a chair brought by a palace servant, and looked at the empress who was half-crouched awkwardly to the side. What happened here? Mm. Answering, Your Majesty... Chen Qing called Cheng Wang Fei over for a chat today, but this child's words offended Cheng Qi, and he didn't even know how to repent, and he didn't even know to repent. So Cheng Qi had him kneel and reflect for a bit. Cheng Qi at the time didn't know that Cheng Wang Fei's male body would actually be this feeble. The empress hadn't expected Cheng Wang to bring the emperor over. Whatever she said in the beginning was correct. As the mother of the country, she had the authority to punish Mu Hanjang. It was just that today, he knelt until he fainted, and the emperor had just so happened to witness it. It looked as if she was deliberately picking on Mu Hanjang, thus treating her stepson with severe resentment, which she fucking was. Emperor Hong Jang gave the empress a profound look. He was very clear on today's affair. She would usually use her authority to rein in one or two of his favored concubines. In order to maintain peace in the harem, he turned a blind eye and ignored it. However, 
Chang Wang was about to set out for battle, and the Empress was actually treating the Chang Wang face so harshly, which clearly showed that she was trying to make trouble for him. Jun Xing, where does it hurt? Jing Xiao saw the person on the couch slowly open his eyes, and he quickly drew close to ask the question in a low voice. Wu Hanjiang looked at Jing Xiao and pinched his palm again, shaking his head lightly to warn him not to say anything. Not to say anything disruptive. Jing Xiao blinked, took the wet cloth towel which the palace maid handed to him, and gently wiped Mu Hanjiang's cheeks and forehead keeping silent. Emperor Hong Zhang also refused to respond to the Empress's words. It was quiet in front of the Feng Yi Palace, with only the sound of cicadas in the distance. The imperial physician appeared in a timely manner, breaking the oppressive atmosphere. The white-whiskered physician examined Mu Han Zhang's complexion and took his pulse, but remained silent. He took some pills out of his medicine box to give to Mu Hanjiang. Then he turned to the Emperor Hong Jiang and said, Reporting to your majesty, I checked Wang Fei's pulse. It was the summer heat entering his body, plus his poor blood flow which caused him to faint. Now that he has woken up, there won't be any major problems once he takes this pill to dispense the heat and rests for a day. It's just... Hearing these two words, Jing Xiao immediately picked up his ears and asked anxiously, What is it? It seems that Wang Fei's meridians are weaker than those of a normal man, and his body is not as robust, the doctor said honestly. Chen will prescribe, of course, a, a course of medicine. Have him drink it again in the evening. Otherwise... The summer heat won't be dispelled. I'm afraid that if it remains inside him, he'll have dizzy spells. Which is fair for sun poisoning, yeah, that's about right. Emperor Hong Jiang remembered that on the second day of Mu Han Jiang's marriage, the latter's complexion had turned white after kneeling for a long time. For other reasons. He nodded a little and said to Zhong Xia and said to Jing Xiao, you go back first. It is not convenient to change clothes and wash in the palace. Jing Xiao still wanted to say something, but was stopped by the person in his arms. Mu Hanjiang struggled mightily to sit up halfway. Thanking Imperial Father for your consideration. Emperor Hong Jiang waved his hand and said to Jing Xiao, whose fury was still obvious on his face, the matter you mentioned earlier, Jen agrees to it. Later, I will make sure to take care of it. Yes. Hearing this, Jing Xiao bowed, picked up his Wang Fei, and turned to, away to leave. Wait, you hear this clip? When Jing Xiao and his wife left, Emperor Hong Jiang finally looked at the nervous Empress. Get this bitch. As the mother of a country, your way of handling matters and your bearing can't even compare with those two of the younger generation. Doing it like this, how can Cheng Wang feel at ease leaving the Cheng Wang Fei in the capital? When the Empress heard these words, she abruptly lifted her head. Your Majesty, when one goes away, one's wife and children are always left in the capital. This has been the rule since ages since ancient times. You still know the rules, Emperor Hong Jiang snorted coldly, picked up a cup, and threw it down in front of the Empress. What did Jen say in the study this morning? Did it all go in, in one ear and come out the other? Your Majesty, Jen Qi... Only then did the Empress realize that while she had gotten some delight out of her schemes... They had already brought her trouble. Moreover, she had left a bad impression on the Emperor, demonstrating that she was unable to see the bigger picture. Cheng Wang Fei was a man and couldn't bear errors. 
The day before yesterday, the empress had urged the emperor to have Cheng Wang take a second wife and have an heir, thus tying Cheng Wang down and preventing him from changing his mind. Although the emperor had agreed, he also said that Cheng Wang was strong-willed and couldn't be forced to do so. Emperor Hong Zheng kneaded the skin between his eyebrows and pointed at the empresses kneeling on the floor. Go to Empress Yan's grave and reflect upon yourself for three days. Think on what you said on the day you were crowned, yet you still treat Jing Chen and Jing Xiao like this today. Done speaking, he tossed his sleeves and departed. After exiting Feng Yi Palace, Emperor Hong Zheng looked back at the gold and green tiles behind him and sighed lightly. If Empress Yan was still around, the imperial palace and court would surely be less turbulent. I believe that. Here we go. Okay, so please keep in mind, Jing Xiao's an idiot. Just that, that should be part of the title, or a summary even. Jing Xiao's an idiot. Here we go. It's all right. Don't worry. After taking a bath, Mu Han Zhang changed into a soft undershirt. He leaned against the head of the bed and looked at Jing Xiao bustling around. He couldn't help but say that sentence to console the other man. Drink the medicine. Jing Xiao was still frightened by what the imperial physician had said about dizzy spells. He had to supervise Mu Han Zhang to make sure he finished all the medicine. Mu Han Zhang was helpless and could only take the medicine bowl and tilt his head back to drink it all. He had yet to taste the bitterness before he was handed a bowl of clear water. Medicine won't work if you take honey afterwards. Since you can't have honey, have a sip of water instead. Mu Han Zhang looked up at Jing Xiao, who wore a serious expression. His heart felt warm and itchy. Jing Xiao was obviously an irritable and thoughtless man. But where Mu Han Zhang was concerned, he was so careful. Jing Xiao looked at Jin Qing, whose complexion was still a little pale, and his heart was very distressed. He fetched the medicinal oil before slowly rolling up the legs of Jing Chao's, of Jun Qing's trousers. Bruises had already formed on his fair knees from kneeling for so long. Blisters had also formed because of the scalding heat of the stone slabs, and Jing Xiao couldn't help but frown. You can't rub medicinal oil on this, or the blisters won't go down. Mu Han Zhang looked at the swollen blisters, which felt itchy and extremely painful. He couldn't help but use a finger to scratch them. Jing Xiao looked at those beautiful knees that had turned so green and that had turned so green and red. Unable to offer much help, he leaned down slowly and pressed a kiss and pressed soft kisses to the injured areas. He then lay down over his Wang Fei's legs to hug his waist, feeling very pained. Mu Han Zhang reached out and touched Jing Xiao's head. I'm not that delicate. By the way, what matter did you discuss with Imperial Father today? This was the so-called teaching one's son in the presence of others and teaching one's wife behind the doors. Imperial Father obviously hadn't wanted to rebuke the Empress in front of them, but that agreement he had given before they left was obviously compensation for Jing Xiao. Oh, we're going into battle next month, and I wanted... <laughs> oh, we're going into battle next month, and I want to go to the army camp tomorrow. I want to get acquainted with the military officers first. Jing Xiao buried his face in the soft shirt and greedily breathed in the faint fragrance coming off of his Wang Fei. This kind of fresh, clear and, clear and warm scent made him want more. You're... You're going... tomorrow? Mu Hanjang was stunned. He thought it would be half a month before they had to separate. He hadn't expected this to happen so fast. Hmm. 
Jing Xiao sat up and saw that his Wang Fei's complexion didn't look right. Thinking he still didn't understand, he explained, It's customary to get acquainted with the soldiers first before going on a campaign, so that there won't be any trouble on the way. Right now, the army is only 50 li away from the capital. An imperial father allowed me to go, which truly is an unexpected fortune. Lu Hanjiang heard the excitement in his words and slowly lowered his eyes. Leaving this time, who knows when you'll return? Did Jing Xiao never think about how they would have to separate? Lu Hanjiang pressed his lips together tightly, and not wanting to see Jing Xiao's expression, he turned his eyes away. In this, he was still like a child who was unable to understand the pain of parting at all. Jing Xiao's eyes widened. He had never thought of leaving Jun Qing. Furthermore, giving a Furthermore, given all the chaos in the capital, it wasn't safe. In his previous life, Jun Qing's condition had worsened. Jing Xiao couldn't relax at all. What was more, if he couldn't see his Wang Fei for even a single day, he feared he absolutely wouldn't have the motivation to fight at all. But he had always thought that his Wang Fei was aware of this. Unexpectedly, it turned out that he himself had forgotten to mention it, hadn't he? Yes, you fucking moron. Oh, he's such an ass. He's such an ass. <laughs> like you love him, but he's such an ass. <sighs> Spiciness. Warning. He's an ass. <sighs> fucking Christ. Jun Jing. Jing Xiao looked at his Wang Fei, whose eyes were downcast as he grieved by himself. <laughs> the glow of the setting sun highlighted the side of his handsome face, his long and delicate eyelashes creating fan shaped shadows. He was extremely lovely, and Jing Xiao's heart couldn't help but skip a beat. He hugged the other man. Jun Jing. I'm going to the military camp tomorrow. I'm afraid in the future. Let's enjoy ourselves tonight. You fucking asshole. Oh my god. He's such an asshole. <laughs> I hope Mu Hanjang makes you pay for this. Like, you're such a dick. <laughs> I can't even with him. I just, I can't even. Ugh. Okay, uh, we have some explicit adult content coming up. Warning, warning, explicit sexual content. Warning. Mm. Muhan Jang. Oh, okay. Yeah. Muhan Jang pursed his lips slightly, silent for a moment. Then he slowly reached for Jing Xiao. His physical strength could never match Jing Xiao's. The latter often wanted to do it many times in one night but sometimes Mu Hanjang couldn't bear it. Furthermore, it wasn't good for both their bodies to do this kind of thing too much. Thus, unless it was a special... Danger zone, exactly. Thus, unless it was special circumstance, Mu Hanjang normally wouldn't let Jing Xiao do it more than two times a day. Jesus. <laughs> oh god, he's such a... I, Mu Han Jang's gonna get him for this. Honest to God. He better. They would be parting soon. So in this case, he would indulge Jing Xiao. You can't see it, but I'm shaking my head. What the fuck? Jing Xiao felt the person in his arms acquiesce, and naturally he wouldn't be polite. He stripped Mu Han Jang of his clothes in two or three moves. Afraid that the other man would bump his knees, Jing Xiao settled between his Wang Fei's legs and leaned over that handsome, slightly melancholy face to plant soft, sweet kisses all over it. Like, Mu Hanjiang is going to... He'll get him back. Because Jing Xiao has to remember, Mu Hanjiang is smarter than he is. Like, oh my god. He's such an ass. Oh. Oh, I can't. Uh, lying on a jade mat, 
Muhanjang could only reach out to hold on to the round pillow under his neck. No matter how many times he did this kind of thing, he always felt an unavoidable pain when Jing Xiao entered him. Jing Xiao kissed the sweat off his forehead of the person under him, nibbled on the, sl nibbled on the slightly turned neck, and moved slowly and gently. After waiting for Mu Han Zheng to get used to it, he gradually sped up. Mu Han Zheng gripped Jing Xiao's shoulders tightly and let the stiff, scorching rod pound into his body. A little more, a little more, so that he could remember this feeling, so that he wouldn't be able to forget during the months or even years until he would see Jing Xiao again. Mu Han Zheng shivered, wanting to avoid the increasingly powerful movements. He was afraid that he wouldn't be able to bear the unceasing strokes that brought him such continuous and fearful pleasure. However, the thing in his body seemed to realize his intention, and it ground non-stop against that place inside him that drove him crazy. Ugh, I can't. Ugh. He didn't know how much time had passed, but Mu Han Jang had already been unable to bear it for a while his slender legs trembling uncontrollably. His lower body had become so scorching hot that it was almost painful and it made him frown. His body twitched incessantly and little Jinching that was sticking to his lower abdomen released its essence. Jing Xiao felt that no matter how much they did it, it wasn't enough. He rested for just a little while and little Xiao was full of energy once again. Still trembling slightly, Mu Han Zhang felt the change in the little guy inside his body and couldn't help but wrinkle his brow. He implored in a slightly hoarse voice, No more. It's the last time. I promise. Fucker. Jing Xiao kissed his teary eyes. Mu Han Zhang looked at him and thought about how, when he opened his eyes tomorrow, they would have to separate. He exhaled lightly and slowly nodded. The author has something to say. <coughs> Listen to me. During a period of... Center... Oh, sorry. During a period of... We must be low-key. Never read it aloud. Everyone, let's read it together. <laughs> that's, their, that's her second, the author's second warning of don't read it aloud. So that's it. So that is the end of volume one and volume two will start next week. I'm so glad we got through that. That is excellent. And it's not even our longest episode, but it is the most chapters we've ever done. So that's exciting. All right, books, who are we going to read? This be up to you. Let me go over to my just chatting page. Choo, 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 this one. Alrighty, let me close this down and then we'll look and we'll see. It has been, it has been read <laughs> Rebels. <laughs> I know, That's, they kept, they, the author keeps mentioning, you know, don't read this out loud and it's not to be read aloud. And we're going, he, he, he. <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay, so we said we's gonna do this, so we're gonna go to browse. We're gonna go to make sure that's not on. We're gonna go to reading. We're gonna see who's doing this. I don't even know what that is. Okay. Turtle vibes. Sleet reads is online now reading. Sleet reads. Who is? I see this. Oh, I. That took me much longer than I needed to. Sleet reads. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Discussing. Magician's Gambit by David Eddings. Okay. So should we do that one? I don't know them. I'm just. I'm, I can't help. If you're in, looking at it right now. Who the hell is this? Turtle vibes. One point six music and. Battle Royale, they're in the wrong fucking place, quite frankly. And then a, a wave stream. 
I don't know what that is. Okay, so we're going to go on to Fall of Sleet. So I'm, uh, I am familiar with them. Okay, so let me do, oh, if I can fucking remember how to do this. All right, I think, right. Okay, so I got to go back, got to go back. Ooh, no, I want to hit that. Um, creator dashboard. All right, it's it's still embarrassing that it's just you and I, just so you know this. Let me see here. Where's my... Where did it say? I have no idea what's happening in that turtle stream. Did you look at it? I'm very curious. I'm very curious. Like, it looks like there's a... I can't, I can't, I don't even know, I'm going to, I'm going to click it. I'm going to click it, I'm going to turn down, and we're going to listen to what this, Jesus. Okay, wait, <laughs> I don't know what this is going to sound like. There is a Mew, there's a, <laughs> there's two anime guys I vaguely recognize, there's a dancing T-Rex, and I, this is bugging me. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember what Pokemon this is. The one that turns into all the other things and always has the little beady eyes. Someone help me. I got stuck in an ad. And I don't, why are you in reading fun? <laughs> like, I kind of want to, and then the screen behind them is melting. I don't know what is going on with this. This is, I don't even know. This is so confusing. Oh, someone help me. What is that Pokemon? Ah, uh, it's gonna. And then the anime boys aren't actually dancing. They're just thrusting. Like this is very awkward. It's kind of catchy though. Okay, so we're gonna go to the guy who's actually doing the reading. Let's let's close that. I don't, I, my brain just leaked out of my ears a little. <laughs> I don't know why they're doing that. Okay, so I have to remember where the hell this, oh, stream manager, duh. Okay. Okay, I'm just, I, I want you to know that I still count this as embarrassing. Sleet reads is what we're going to. There's the raid, that's the raid channel. Where are we going? Oh. Kintrin is on. Just a second here. Just a sec. Kintrin is on. I just, I can't remember. I'm going to mute this just real quick. And he's got zero viewers, but he's not a reader. Well, he is a reader. He's just not very good at it. Oh, it's only starting soon. He's not actually starting yet. VTuber English. Oh, he's just chatting. Okay. No, okay, we'll go to the... Okay, so we're gonna go over here. I've got that song stuck in my head, I think. I don't know. That's... Okay. <laughs> he's got five more... He's got more people than I knew. Alright, let's... I don't... I'm not good at this. I hope I'm doing this right. Ready to run right now with one person. Toad was to think he wearing heels. Sir rating of a party of one. Hello, Serge. Hello. <laughs> Hello from Serge Library. Hey, the screws and brews again. Alrighty, everyone. My stream thingy stopped. Or it didn't stop working, but I just can't seem to get it to work as it should, so we're going to do that. Um, I don't know why this won't... There, it goes back. Um... Right, so I hope you have enjoyed this extra long uh, video. I am going to... Yeah, I'm turning you off. Okay. 
Oh, just a sec. Right, so uh, sorry about that. Um, I went to do the raid thing and I was watching and that was interesting, but then I got cut off and it didn't end well. And on Twitch, it's still going to be cut off, but at least for the overall video, I wanted to include this. Um, first, I want to thank Books so much for hanging out with me tonight. It was great. Lovely to have you again. Um, I would also like to thank my lurkers. I did notice you in here. I hope you enjoyed this extra long chapter. Um, once again, uh, this next uh Next episode will be next Tuesday. Uh, let me just see what the actual date is. Uh, next episode will be next Tuesday, August the 16th, and we will continue on. I believe we have enough chapters so far for another episode of Married Thrice to Salted Fish. And then on Wednesday the 17th, we will be back here uh, with The Wife is First to continue on with chap the first chapter, so chapter 40, and the first uh, chapters of volume two, which you'll definitely want to tune in with because Mu Hanjang is absolutely going to be pissed at Jing Xiao, and you'll definitely want to tune in for that. It's very cute and very fun, and the two of them together are just awesome. And they're off to the battlefield. So that'll be good. Uh, the uh, If you're a long-time listener, you'll remember how I mentioned that this story actually has two characters that are very much like... Uh, Wei Wu Xian and Lan Wenji, uh, and um, the, they're coming up in this second part. So they're the two generals that will be introduced in within the next few chapters. So you'll definitely want to tune in for those. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do, not next week's, but the weeks after that chapters, only because I um, won't be here for the Wednesday chapter. So... Uh, I may do an extra stream this weekend, maybe? I don't know. I won't. I shouldn't say anything. I don't know. Somehow, I'll either... I, I don't want to just cancel it. Like, I want to pick it up. But we will see. But yeah, so I greatly appreciate all of you hanging out. And I hope you've enjoyed. And I hope you'll tune in next time for... Uh, well... The next time we're actually streaming, it'll be Married Thrice to Salted Fish, but the next uh, installment of The Wife is First, which will be next Wednesday, and we'll get started with Volume 2. Prepare for war. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. No, um, but yeah, so from Yui and I, we wish you a very good night. Thank you once again for joining me, and until next time, happy listening.